Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from cloudy Budapest. I hope everybody has had a good week so far and is looking forward to a great weekend. Hi Michael, hi Jainil, hi Pooja, hi Begjan, hi Rajveer, Daniel, Sammy. Good to see many of the members already in class. This is a members chat class. Everybody's welcome to watch. In 90 minutes, we will have an all chat class with a brand new uh, cue card speaking part two for the speaking section of the exam uh, topic. And uh, while we wait for a few more members, uh, just a little bit about us. These lessons are brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Definitely check us out there. And for the general IELTS, check us out at G. I E L T S help.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of materials to help you improve uh, quickly and efficiently, not just your English, but also your communication skills. Okay, so this is the academic website here with the blue background. Click that big red button to join us there. And uh, this is our general IELTS website here with the green background. Click that big red button to join us there and get access to all of our wonderful materials and strategies. Uh, as you can see, we're British Council IELTS Registration Center partners. So we have a direct link with the British Council as well. Our materials are recognized worldwide and we help thousands and thousands of students succeed every year in their immigration and academic goals. Uh, you can also download our apps, Academic IELTS Help for aehelp.com and General IELTS Help for gieltshelp.com. These apps link to the respective websites for even more learning. If you ever have questions or comments, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. All right, let's get into today's writing. So just a quick peek at the question that we started yesterday. Uh, we started with this question yesterday. Let's read this together one more time. IELTS task to writing. You should spend about 40 minutes on this task. Psychologists have known for many years that colors can affect how people feel. <coughs> Excuse me. And for this reason, attention should be paid to color schemes when decorating places such as offices and hospitals. How true is this statement? How much does color influence people's health and capacity to work? Okay, so this task two question, uh, students, I didn't mention this yesterday, but it starts general. So this part here, this first sentence is very general. And then um, the uh, question becomes a lot more specific in the next sentence. So this is a lot more uh, specific, as you can tell. Okay. And uh, then you have these questions here. How true is this? And how much does color influence people's health? So the, again, this is general. And then this part here is specific. I was kind of thinking after class yesterday, why were some of you writing such general um, statements for your thesis? Okay, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Beck, John. Thanks, Bisser, um, for that blessing. Uh, so I was thinking, why did you write such general statements for your thesis instead of these specific ones? And then I realized it's because you're thinking about the global question. So let me clarify this for you a little bit. Sometimes you get questions for task two in the IELTS that start very general and then uh, they move to a more specific statement. So in this case, students, your IELTS essay should always focus mostly on the specific statement and the specific question. Okay, so the specific parts make up your body uh, paragraphs. And the general uh, kind of statement and question, that's a, just a bit of uh, your um, intro or introductory paragraph and your conclusion paragraph, okay? 
Um, so that's all that's for. The reason IELTS gives this information, psychologists have known for many years that colors can affect how people feel, is because they want to make sure that everybody understands where the question is coming from. So if they just start with, uh, attention should be given to color schemes when decorating places such as offices and hospitals. That would be maybe confusing to a lot of students who are sitting the IELTS exam. So they try to help you by giving this general information. Okay. But again, your essay, including your thesis, your body paragraphs, and your take home message should focus on these specific elements of the question. Is that clear? So they don't really want you focusing on these general parts too much. You're going to get a lower band score if you do that. Is that understood? And it's the same for a university as well. Okay, is that clear? Everybody, thumbs up, yeah? So general, just to give you an idea, specific, that's the focus of your essay. Okay, Devyan, Allen, welcome to our group of members. All right, good. I can see that that's clear for all of you, so we'll move on, all right? So remember that, okay? Remember that really important tip, all right? You can easily save yourself a full band score if you are to get this kind of a question in your exam and you focus on the specific instead of the general, okay? So very important point. Okay. All right, so let's keep going. Um, okay, so we discussed the topic, it's colors. We said what, why, how. That's going to be part of uh, the uh, background, of course. Then we talked about the controlling ideas. Again, you notice that this, when we're dealing with the controlling ideas, we're dealing with the specific, okay? So what is the impact of colors on human health and work capacity? So we're already focusing on the specific here, okay? So we went through the what, why, how for that, and then we developed our thesis, and you did a good job on that, and then I uh, ran out of time, so I said for homework to please finish the introductory paragraph so we can do the body paragraphs and the conclusion today for this essay. Um, and of course I did that as well, so I wrote a, an introductory paragraph after class, for today's class. Uh, but I want to give you a head start here. So, um, members, uh, hopefully some of you did this. Uh, please share the hook for your introductory paragraphs. And uh, for everybody watching, yes, you should have a hook, a background, and a thesis for your Task 2 essay to get high band scores. Uh, the Task 2 essay in the IELTS, it's not an IELTS essay, it's a persuasive essay, which is a standard type of essay in English writing in university, okay? Um, they don't ask you, I don't think, Hassan. Let me just check that out, but I don't think they actually ask that. So, uh, no, um, Hassan, there is no you. So this is a third person uh, voice for this essay. How true is this statement? How much does the color influence people's health? I don't see you anywhere, even here. Give explanations and examples to support your opinion. Uh, this is not uh, first person, okay? Um, the first person would be uh, elsewhere. So it would be uh, give uh, explanation as, and examples from your own experience. That's different than this. So Hassan, this is third person, okay? This is definitely a third person essay much more than a first person. You could still do okay with a first person, but I would recommend third person here for sure. All right, so I see some hooks coming up. Um, hook, again, introduce the topic with an interesting statement, okay? Uh, Beck John says there are hundreds of different colors in the world. Mm, too general, Beck John. Uh, Rajveer says colors have been associated to human psychology since the era of dinosaurs. <laughs> Um, Rajavir, not bad. You put a smile on my face. Um, I don't think we were humans uh, in the dinosaur era. Uh, most biologists would argue that we were primates at that time, not even Neanderthals. So I think it's a little bit extreme, Rajavir, but uh, maybe simplify it, Rajavir. Colors have been associated with human psychology for the past couple hundred years, I think would be more realistic. Okay. 
All right, Rajveer Singh says, uh, Daliwal says, colors are an essential part of everyone's life as they can either irritate or soothe one's eyes. Um, Rajveer, too uh, much information in your hook. Remember, students, your hook uh, should be uh, eight to ten words, okay? I think you're overstepping the hook here. The hook doesn't need to be anything so complex, all right? Pooja says, life is like a box of crayons. The colors have a power to direct influence of one's feelings. Pooja, uh, no, don't use quotes like that, okay? Uh, I, I guess you're taking it from life is like a box of chocolates, um, but um, don't use quotes. Use your own words, okay? Uh, I think uh, it's awkward and confusing, Pooja. I wouldn't recommend that, all right? Um, Daniel says, uh, colors can make people depressed or... Uh, delightful and motivated. Um, students, don't introduce your arguments for your essay in your hook, okay? Uh, just say something about the topic that's interesting and captivating, okay? It doesn't need to be that complex. Um, all right, Beckjohn says, colors play an important role in people's daily lives. Good, Beckjohn. That's much better. So pay attention, students, to Beckjohn's uh, latest hook which is colors play an important role in people's daily lives. That's it. You don't need to be too fancy. You need to be clear and accurate. Okay. Samuel says colors have known to have a potent effect on the mind and also the way we feel. Too complicated, Samuel, and you're making some grammar mistakes. Uh, colors have been known. Because you have the missing been, Samuel, for the passive, it sounds like colors themselves are thinking, which is really strange. Okay. All right. Careful, students. Careful. Um, just a quick note on this, because I think a lot of you are... are uh, the IELTS is not the place, students, where you want to... Uh, I know you're practicing your English and you're trying new words. That's fantastic. These classes are the place to do it. But in the real IELTS exam, please uh, keep it simple. Okay, so um, Ayana says, our life isn't as marvelous as, as it is now without colors, and it also influences how we deal with our day-to-day -day activities. Way too complex for a hook, Ayana. Way too complex, and you have several mistakes in there. Um, isn't is a contraction. Don't use contractions in the academic essay, so is not. Okay, uh, Nazir, very good. That's a band nine level hook. Nazir says colors give people the ability to differentiate elements. Fantastic, right? Uh, where did Nazir get that from? From the planning, okay? Um, so why do we see colors? So we can differentiate. That's a good place to grab the hook from. Nazir, remember that everyone from yesterday uh, when we talked about the what, why, how for colors? So why do humans perceive colors? Primarily, colors help humans to differentiate and distinguish to a great extent or to a greater extent, right? So that is all Nazir did is just remembered that and took it for the hook. Very good, Nazir. That's how you do it. Okay. All right. Here's mine somewhere. Find it here. So here's my introduction. Here's my hook. I'm just going to... I don't really want to spoil the background for you, but I'll bring it up. Um, so this is my hook. Colors are an important part of human existence. That's it. Look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words. I want you to practice eight to ten word hooks at home. Okay. So colors are an important part of human existence. That's it. All right. So hooks are important. They are contained in most essays in the English language. Okay, you should have it for your task too if you want to get a high band score. I don't care who says what or what teacher says what else. It's not true that you don't need it. Okay, ask the ESOL examination board who makes the IELTS and they'll say, yeah, my hook is a good idea if you're writing a persuasive essay. Okay, so remember, your hook should be eight to 12 words. It should introduce the topic with an important global fact to catch 
your readers' attentions. Okay. It should not have any mistakes as it is bad to start with mistakes for a first impression. Okay. All right, um, so then we uh, write the background. The background, students, again, don't overcomplicate it. This is where your planning comes in handy. We talked about colors. Now, the background doesn't just focus on the topic, okay? Very importantly, the background begins to focus on the controlling idea, okay? So when we say background, we mean definitions... not only for the topic, um, but also for the controlling ideas, okay? Uh, same thing with the importance. So the background is made up of two elements. It's made up of definitions of important keywords. Uh, that you're discussing in the essay and the and the controlling idea and the topic uh, are what make that up. And then, of course, the importance of the question. So here is my background. I'm just taking this from um, my planning. It is clearly proven that colors, which are perceived by the rods and cones of the retina and interpreted by the mind, have direct impact on emotions and well-being. Now, again, Hassan, this is going back to your question. It's a third-person thesis. Okay, it makes more sense here. And I did a little bit of adjusting. So, therefore, it is absolutely important in the design of workplaces and hospitals to give due attention to color schemes as certain colors can elicit negative outcomes for people's productivity and health while other colors have the opposite positive effect. Okay, so that would be your band nine introduction. Okay, so one more time, students, read this introduction with me just so it's very clear. Reflect on the question, okay, and then we'll get into the body paragraphs. So one more time. Colors are an important part of human existence. It is clearly proven that colors, which are perceived by the rods and cones of the retina and interpreted by the mind, have direct impact on emotions and well-being. Therefore, it is absolutely important in the design of workplaces and hospitals to give due attention to color schemes as certain colors can elicit negative outcomes for people's productivity and health, while other colors have the opposite positive effect. Okay, so first I'm going to uh, write about the negative, a body paragraph, and then I'm going to write another body paragraph about the positive, and then the conclusion. Okay, all right, and I see there's quite a few uh, sentences coming up, students, for the background, which is great. I'm not going to spend too much time reviewing those right now, as in the past, because I'd like to give you more time for the body paragraphs, and then we'll get into more uh, reflecting and reviewing for those. So let's get into writing body paragraph one. Okay, now body paragraph one is going to be about the negative impact of choosing the wrong color schemes. So it makes logical sense and it's better flow for reading to go from the negative and then into the positive. So body paragraph one negative, and then into the positive, okay? So body one um, should be about ignoring color schemes and choosing colors that have negative results for humans. Okay, I'm not going to give you more here. I want you to write the topic sentence. So the topic sentence... Okay, this is the topic sentence. Um, has to be a deeper definition on this concept. Okay, so give me some topic sentences, students. I'm going to write one here in a minute as well. I want to... Um, 
uh, give you a head start. Okay, so Beck John, nice. Beck John, you're going fast, which is good because you're practicing your writing fluency. It's good to do that, Beck John. So students, don't try to write the perfect sentence. Just get a sentence out there which you think is good, especially the content, okay? Uh, because you want to work on your fluency, especially members that have been in these classes for a longer time, really work on your fluency as well, okay? So getting your ideas out quickly. Right. Beck John says painting work and medical spaces with inappropriate colors may have a dramatic adverse influence on individuals um, uh, working and being healed there. Okay, the end of it, Beck John's a little bit awkward. Um, instead of that long ending, Beck John, I would just say adverse influence on occupants. Occupants. Occupants are the people who are either living or working there, or sorry, or uh, patients as well, right, Beg John? So just occupants. Painting the work and medical spaces with inappropriate colors uh, may have a dramatically adverse influence on occupants, okay? So painting and decorating work and medical spaces with inappropriate colors such as gray black or brown can have dramatically adverse uh, influence on occupants. Okay, I would use the word occupants like that, Beck John. All right, otherwise it's good. It's very good. In fact, so good, I'll take it from you. Okay, with a little bit of uh, correction. That's kind of my goal today. If I see some really good uh, responses, I'll just grab them. Okay, as long as they're coming quickly enough. All right, Hassan says, certain designers create disruptive effects on people's uh, behavior. Um, certain designs, Hassan, certain designs create disruptive effects on people's behavior when they ignore the color spectrum and its influence on the human mind. I would finish that sentence, uh, Hassan, with when they ignore the colors spectrum Color spectrums shows possession, Hassan. Color spectrums influence on the human mind. Okay, that's how I would do it, Hassan. So I'll just do a bracket correction up here. Um, influence, so your sentence is going like this, Hassan. And then um, ignore um, the color uh, spectrum, you're using the um, American spelling, I'm using the British spelling of color. Um, spectrum uh, influence on the human mind. I would go like that, okay, to finish that idea, All right? Okay, uh, Bisser says, on the one hand, there are many colors like red, purple, and black that have negative impact for people because they remind us of fire, death, depression, and they are not the best to paint medical buildings and workplaces. Um, yeah, okay, uh, Bisser, that <laughs> would be more of the explanation. So Bisser, your topic sentence is a deeper definition of your first point, and then you go into an explanation. Um, it's not, it's okay, so it's not the end of the world to start with an explanation in the body paragraph, um, but it's easier if you just go topic, sentence, explanation, example. It's, a, it's kind of a simpler recipe for the IELTS exam especially. Once you get to university, you can get a little bit fancier with that. But in the IELTS, just keep it really simple, Bisser. Topic, sentence, explanation, example. Okay? Those are the... Co and then connecting sentence. That's the contents of your... Um, of your body paragraph. All right. 
Okay, Nazir says, choosing the wrong colors in medical and workplaces irritates people's psychology. Um, I don't think irritate is the best word, Nazir. I would say negatively impacts, okay, or disrupts people's psychology would be a little bit better than irritate. Uh, irrit it's not a terrible choice, uh, Nazir, but it's a little bit awkward. Samuel says, decorating workspaces in hospitals with radical and dull colors like uh, radium, gray, or black can hinder productivity and the healing process of occupants. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, that's good, Samuel. I really like it. I like how you put the idea of productivity and healing process. Now, we use productivity and healing, Samuel, in uh, the introduction. So try to paraphrase those, okay? So don't just repeat the same words that are in the thesis, Samuel, but paraphrase them. So can um, hinder um, the speed of workflow and um, uh, physical recovery, something like that. Okay, so some some kind of um, a paraphrase. Okay, I'll do that in brackets here as well. So meaning paraphrase the points from the thesis. Okay, don't just repeat. Okay, so the example here is, um, uh, let's see, Samuel, so dot, 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 it's good, your, your uh, topic sentence is good, um, just a little bit of paraphrasing will make it a lot better, Samuel, can hinder um, the uh, speed of work flow, and from this you can go into a really nice explanation, Samuel, so um, students, start working on your explanations because that's the next question, and I'd like to grab one of your explanations instead of my own today. So uh, if you're done your topic for this, give me an explanation tip. For your explanation, try to think of some numbers as well. So think of some quantitative language. So give me some proof using numbers. Okay, numbers are your friend, especially for those academic students when you're writing a persuasive essay. Okay, so think, think of some numbers. All right, um, so can hinder the speed of work flow and physical uh, recovery. Okay, so I would, uh, I would finish it like that. Samuel, I th because that shows your lexical resource. Uh, there are other words that you could find here or a couple other ways to express this as well. It doesn't have to be exactly that. The key is to paraphrase, okay? All right. Harpreet Kaur, welcome to our group of members. Okay. All right, so um, let's see. Some more answers here coming up. Pooja says, pale colors, unpainted walls in work areas and hospital spaces lead to adverse effects on human thoughts. This may hinder their working capacity and productivity. Also, it may create a pessimistic outlook. Yeah, so pessimism, depression, those are good ideas. Pooja, put those into a nice explanation. Okay. Abhishek says, the shades and trimming... The medical and office spaces with mismatched colors not only lead to unfavorable outcomes, but less efficient workflow. Workflow is a good word to remember here. Uh, Abhishek, that's good. Yeah, finish the, uh, you have a missing word at the end there, but otherwise it's good. Uh, Begjan, the explanation uh, says, since people spend the majority of their lives in their workplaces um, painted in different unsuitable colors, they are highly influenced mentally which in turn causes depression and anxiety. It's a little bit confusing, Beck John. I don't. Th I think uh, you need more clarity there. And then you threw in the twelve hours, which is good that you're thinking about the time. Um, but I think you can write that a little bit more specifically and a little bit clearer. Okay. Lapouge says choosing inappropriate colors in workplaces and healthcare facilities create. Uh, negative effects on occupants. Okay, Lapuja, that's a good topic sentence. Let's get into the explanation. Okay. Um, Hassan, okay, so Hassan says, when an interior designer chooses a color that mismatches, mismatch, Hassan, not match, mismatch, mismatches with the space's function, 
uh, that creates uh, annoyance for individuals who occupy it. Simplify, Hassan. Occupants. Okay, um, Hassan, uh, instead of um, giving me the broad idea, give me the specific idea, the specific explanation. So when an interior designer chooses to paint the walls of an office uh, gray, um, then... Uh, Spending 12 hours working in that space can easily lead people to be depressed and lethargic. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do the explanation here myself as well while we wait for some more of your answers to come up. So painting the walls of hospitals and offices gray or black leads people who spend 12 hours a day or more regularly in these environments to become lethargic. It's a new word that I'm maybe teaching some of you there and depressed. Okay, so that would be my explanation. Okay, that would be my explanation. Um, so painting and decorating work in medical spaces with inappropriate colors such as gray, black, and brown can have dramatically adverse effects on occupants. Uh, painting the walls of hospitals and offices gray or black leads people who spend 12 hours a day or more regularly in these environments to become lethargic and depressed, okay? Um, and then here we can come up with an example now, all right? So the example has to be even more specific, and this is where you come up with some creative false research that's believable, okay? All right, um, so if you've done your explanation, then I'd like to see your example for this. Okay. All right, let's see. So, uh, Alves says, uh, choosing the wrong set of colors for a specific place can lead to uncomfortable feelings and those who spend significant time there. Alves, that would be your topic sentence. Okay, explanation has to be more detailed. Uh, Bisser says, when people choose to paint the walls of hospitals or offices in colors like red, dark gray, purple, or even darker colors, it has a negative impact on the occupants who spend more than six hours there. Okay, Bisser, that's good. It's a good explanation. You're using some more specific language, a bit of quantitative uh, information with more than six hours. Good. Uh, Samuel says, since people... Uh, spend nearly 75% of their day in workplaces, having walls with somber colors like gray could demotivate and induce a sense of depression. Um, yeah, okay, good. You don't need the in there spirits. It's too much, Samuel, just depression, period. That's good, Samuel. That's good, okay? All right. All right, Ayana says, if a room is painted using a good color scheme, it could lead to people having a positive mood and less than stressful atmosphere. Um, Ayana, that would be in your next body paragraph. So that would be uh, for the positive side, okay? Uh, Hina Arshad says, from the perspective of interior designers, by painting black colored walls in offices, this would depress workers who spend more than eight hours in that place. Okay, Hina, that's a good explanation. Just watch your grammar, okay? Just watch your grammar, but it's a good idea, all right? 
All right, so Beckjohn uh, has an example. Uh, Beckjohn says, for example, a study carried out by San Diego University showed that individuals who work in offices painted with dull colors, uh, such as black and gray, show 75% uh, more cases of depression than those whose offices are, are, are painted bright. Uh, very good, Beck John. That's exactly the type of, um, of example uh, that we're looking for. Okay, perfect. Well done. It's third person. It's very specific. That's exactly what I was um, thinking of. Okay, Pooja says healing has been hindered by up to 30% in hospitals with pale walls in the... Um, pediatric ward of Columbia hospitals in comparison to uh, pink colored surroundings. Very good, Pooja. That's exactly what we're looking for. Dr. Krishna says, a study conducted by the Royal College of Psychology points out that people working in offices with gaudy and dark colored shaded offices have more anxiety and depression. And these companies have a 20% higher rate of bankruptcy something like that dr krishna perfect very good so um a recent study conducted by oxford uh, psychologists statistically showed that um office workers is surrounded by bland and dark colored interiors reported uh, a 20% higher rate of depression than the population average and company profits were 75% less than the industry standard. Okay, so that would be my example, uh, very much comparable to what many of you are writing. So that's great, okay? Um, so uh, here now, all we need is a connecting sentence. Connecting, concluding sentence. Uh, and uh, give it a shot, students. So uh, jump the gun on this one. I'll again give you a head start here. Let's see uh, what you come up with for your uh, connecting, concluding sentence. Uh, meanwhile, I'll uh, review and read this uh, body paragraph so you kind of see where we're going, okay? So painting and decorating work in medical spaces with inappropriate colors uh, such as gray, black, and brown, can have dramatically adverse influence on occupants. Painting the walls of hospitals and offices gray or black leads people to, who spend 12 hours a day or more regularly in these environments to become lethargic and depressed. A recent study conducted by Oxford psychologists statistically showed that office workers surrounded by bland and dark colored interiors reported a 20% higher rate of depression than the population average, and company profits were 75% less than the industry standard. Okay, there you go. Now all we need is a connecting, concluding sentence to roll into the uh, positive side, which is the positive effects of colors on uh, workers' uh, productivity and on the healing of patients. Okay, so uh, give me a, a concluding sentence for this, students. Uh, again, Concluding connecting sentences, keep them simple. Think more about the information that you had just written instead of the information that you will write. Okay, so it's okay to think a little bit about what you're going to write in the next paragraph, but it should be more of a concluding connecting sentence than a connecting foreshadowing sentence. So Beck John says, however, opposite colors can have a completely positive outcome. Okay, so Beck John, that's what I mean. You're kind of 
foreshadowing and thinking towards the next paragraph, it's okay, but make it a little bit more concluding uh, to this, okay, to what we just said here. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Hassan says, for this reason, uh, it is important to pay attention to color spectrums in these particular spaces. Okay, Hassan, that's a little bit better. Okay, that's better. I like Hassan's a bit more than Beckjohn's in this case, for sure. It's a little bit more of a concluding connecting than a connecting foreshadowing. Okay, Rajvir says, therefore, colors have effects on the human mind and due attention should be paid. Yeah, not bad. Okay, uh, think about um, the questions. Think about that dialogue between you and your reader, okay? Um, so here, the alien reader says, uh, so at the end of this paragraph, what are you saying? And then me as the writer will say, well, I'm saying that these aren't really the desired effects uh, of colors in these spaces, so um, attention needs to be paid, right? Okay, so connecting concluding sentence, uh, clearly, These are undesirable results for such establishments. Establishments. Uh, so attention must be given to the color palette. Okay, so that would be my uh, connecting concluding sentence. Does that make sense? So uh, here again, I'm always pushing you students, especially since many of you have been with me for some time now, and I'm always pushing you to reach that next level of literature. Okay, and uh, so this is a little bit of new information, I think, for even the students who have been here a while, that you're concluding connecting, not so much connecting foreshadowing. Why? Because you have a whole paragraph to do that. Okay, hopefully that's clear for everyone. All right. Okay, so we go into body paragraph two. Now, body two, of course, the topic sentence is the opposite. Okay, so it is about the... A positive choice of colors leading to positive results. Okay, so um, write this. Um, okay, Beck John says, Yeah, I got you. I got what you mean. That's good, Beck John. Okay, I'm happy you got that. All right, so uh, write me a topic sentence that's about um, uh, the positive choice. Now, obviously, we can connect here. Uh, with saying on the contrary, or this is where you could use on the other hand. Uh, that would be a good way to connect here, okay? And again, for everybody who's watching this lesson, uh, the this kind of essay structure and what I'm showing you here, this is how you get into the band seven, eight, nine realm of the IELTS writing section in a much easier way, okay? Uh, forget about all those silly template essays that you might have seen on the internet or learned about where you're learning this essay will discuss and then point one, point two, point three. Okay. All right. So Bister says, on the other hand, though, people who work in rooms that are painted in green, white, or sky blue cl colors are more productive and do not get stressed or exhausted. Okay. Bister, not bad. Um, instead of the negative, do not get stressed or um, report the positive Bister. So, and uh, stay energetic throughout the day. Positive is always better than the negative. You get what I'm saying, Bister? So instead of saying, do not get stressed or exhausted, say, and remain energetic throughout the day. Positive is better than negative. Got it, Bister? Yeah? Okay. All right. Um, Hassan, you're not saying it because it's not speech. You're writing it. Okay. Um, we only use say, Hassan, in narrative writing. It's more in narrative writing, not so much in persuasive. So, uh, Hassan, instead of having said that, it's having stated this. Okay, not that, because it's this. It's this paper. It's this essay. So, having stated this, selecting 
certain colors can increase tranquility and safety among people in certain hospitals. Now, uh, Hassan, it's not tranquility and safety, but it's productivity, right? And healing. So stick to those. Don't go into other domains so much. All right. Okay. Got it. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, Pooja says, on the other hand, vibrant colors have been known to boost healing and individual productivity. Okay, uh, students, think about other words um, than healing and productivity, okay? There are different ways to describe that. So don't repeat the thesis verbatim, okay? Verbatim means word for word. So avoid repetition of the thesis word for word. Find some other words. Find some more descriptive ways to express that. Okay. Um, yeah. So Bisser. Yeah, exactly. Stay relaxed and energetic. Exactly. Much better, Bisser. Much better. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, Beck John says, on the other hand, selecting bright colors such as white and blue for important establishments like he healthcare centers and workplaces results in the uh, faster uh, healing process and performance. Very good, Beck John. You're picking up what I'm putting down. I'm liking it. Okay, nice. So you're working to paraphrase. Uh, that's great. Good. All right, Rajveer Singh says, carefully chosen color schemes help companies and medical facilities to motivate their workers and improve patients' conditions quickly. I love it, Rajveer. That's a band nine. I'm going to take yours. Okay. So... Look at Rajveer's. It's elegant. It's nice. It's paraphrasing. It's simple, carefully uh, chosen color schemes uh, help companies. Sure, companies. Why not? Instead of offices or workplaces and medical uh, facilities. Motivate. You don't need the two there. Uh, motivate uh, their workers and improve their patients. Um, the hyphen is after the S here, Rajvir, to show more than one patient. So multiple p patients, uh, conditions. Okay, so plural, plural. Okay, uh, very nice topic sentence to start off body paragraph two. Okay, it's a deeper definition of the second thesis point, and it's elegantly written. Now we come into the explanation. The example. And then we write the conclusion. Okay. So, um... I'm going to give you that for homework, but I think what I'll do in the future is maybe stick in one more class for this task two. So next time that I'm doing a task two members, I'll do all three classes on task two so that we can really get through all of the task two in class. I hope that sounds good. And so I can give you feedback on your conclusion the next time as well, and then maybe leave some time uh, for... Um, uh, questions and answers. Okay. But for this one right now, just do it for homework. Uh, and then next time I'll do it a little bit differently. So I'll think, I think I have a pretty good idea of how to do it with you next time. So you get the full essay, uh, and members, uh, tomorrow it's a question and answer session. So, uh, if you have questions about the conclusion, uh, tomorrow will be a great time to ask me. Okay. Uh, we can even reflect on this essay and tomorrow's uh, members chat class. And of course, if you have other questions that you want to ask about the IELTS exam or about uh, the English language, about uh, communicating um, through writing or speaking or comprehension, then tomorrow will be your chance uh, to ask me that. Uh, everybody watching, uh, you have another class coming up in 30 minutes, which will focus on a new um, part two question for the speaking section. It was requested by a student, uh, by one of our members. It was a good request, so I scheduled that. Uh, you're doing a great job, members, in this writing. I just wanted to tell you that. 
and hats off to all of you uh, for your fantastic effort. You're very welcome, Le Pouge. Uh, you're very welcome, Dr. Krishna. Um, God bless you as well, Sammy. And uh, hopefully I'll see all of you. For everybody who's watching, oh yeah, welcome new members. I saw there were two of you in this class. That's great. Make sure to send me an email so I can hook you up with your perks. Um, and uh, for everybody who's watching, to get all of our great materials, HD videos, uh, visit us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Join the premium package. Uh, and for general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com, okay? All right. Thumbs up back at you, Lapouge. Bye for now, everyone. See you shortly in 30 minutes. And I look forward to seeing the rest of your essays. I will post this essay on our community board. Bye for now.